Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Asha Jones, and this, as Grant said, is Entrepreneuring in Detroit. I know that's not grammatically correct, but that's what we do here in Detroit. We make up words because that's what we do as entrepreneurs, right? So we're talking about networking your way to a greater net worth. And networking is something that anyone can do. And so we're going to talk about that. So today we're going to talk about a number of things, but what we're really going to do is break down the word networking into 10 steps. So I, I'm going to introduce myself. So the things that we're going to talk about and cover, the introduction, I'm Asha Jones, what, why, and who can network, and then networking in 10 steps. So taking the word networking, make it in an acronym, and breaking each one of those down. So in terms of who I am, I am a 10 years plus sales uh, professional. I've sold more than $5 million um, of goods and services over the years. I have 20 years experience in food service, five or more years in transportation, and I've logged more than a million commercial miles uh, driven. In terms of awards and accolades, I am a President's Club sales rep, um, accolades or certifications. I'm a Surf Safe certified kitchen manager. I do have a commercial driver's license. Um, I'm a transportality specialist, and that's another word that I made up, uh, which is a mixture of transportation and hospitality. So with a background in food, transportation, and service, you just get transportality because I really just love telling people about what's in Detroit, showing them and taking them. So that's what we do at Break Time Tours. The original company that I founded is called Lunch Break, um, and both of those are break like on your car because it's a specialization in mobility. Um, Detroit is where cars really got their their famousness. I mean, Detroit put the world on wheels, right? We didn't invent the car, but we did invent mass production and made it so that everybody could afford a car. Um, so I consider myself to be a Detroit ambassador, and I pride myself on being an experienced creator. And so to tell you a little bit about what I've done in terms of entrepreneurship, I am an alumnus of G Beta. And if you guys aren't familiar with G Beta and Generator, definitely look them up. They are a pre-revenue accelerator or a non-equity accelerator here in Detroit. It's a wonderful program. Um, I work with the Detroit Neighborhood Entrepreneurs Project from the University of Michigan. I'm a five-time Any Ideas finalist. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> um, I'm a Motor City Match awardee, and I was a finalist for the design tract in Motor City Match. We'll talk more about that. I graduated from Prosperous Detroit in 2017. That's an organization that really changed my life and the life of my business. Um, I won their pitch competition, which was a huge part of that in 2017. I participated in Detroit Soup. I was this close. I didn't win, but the person that won, I was happy for him. I probably would have voted for her if I hadn't been in it. Um, I presented in Detroit, um, the TEDx Lab, uh, TEDx by Detroit uh, Lab, not as a presenter, but in the place where they let the people table. And I'll talk a little bit more about that experience. I, as I mentioned, I founded a company called Lunch Break. We're building the, fur, the world's first mobile carryout bus to run. And a bus to run, if you think about mobile food, a food truck is a kitchen on wheels, but a bus to run is a cafeteria on wheels. And we'll talk a little bit about that, not a whole lot. I'm also a blogger, author, speaker, and storyteller. Uh, my very first love, I found myself in food and in transportation and in sales, but my first love, when I was in kindergarten, my teacher asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up, Asha? I said, I want to be a doctor. And she said, what kind of doctor? And I said, I want to be a doctor like Dr. Seuss. And she said, I think you want to write books. And I'm like, yep, I do. And I've actually written my first book. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, it's available for pre-order until July 1st. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with entrepreneuring. It tells more about my story. Um, but it's my very first book. So I'm really, really proud about that. So what is networking? Networking is the exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or special interest, usually in an informal social setting. Networking often begins with a single point of common ground. Now, this is important to think about. When you think about networking, a lot of times people think that it happens at networking events, but networking can happen anywhere. It can happen at your co-working space. It can happen at the coffee shop. It can happen downtown. It can happen while you're working. Um, but it, the important thing to remember is a single point of common ground. One of the things that's a single point of common ground in Detroit that's really great is that we're all Detroiters and we get that a lot of times we have to get it out of the mud and do it ourselves because as Detroiters, we've always been looked down upon. One of the things that I talk about is being a lifelong Detroiter by choice. I was born here, raised here, but I came back here after college and I've always lived in Detroit proper. 
And that wasn't always easy in the early 2000s and the 2010s before things really got better and Detroit started to be cute. You know what I'm saying? When the rest of the world decided that, you know, we were worthy of some attention. Um, so the great thing about entrepreneuring in Detroit is the, the, the amount of collaboration that people are willing to do is really high. So we talked about what is networking. Now, why should I network? Networking can open the door to new opportunities, relationships, and business insights. And that's just sort of a, a given, right? But networking is the thing that it starts with the introduction. It starts with letting somebody know who you are. Who can network? Anyone can network. And that's what we're going to talk about. The 10 tips that we're going to go through will show you how using these best practices that I've used over the years as an entrepreneur in Detroit have gotten me in the rooms with people that at one time I always say that I've been in places where my idols have become my equals and where people that I've uh, looked up to, that I've wanted to work with, I've been able to. So the first in, in networking is niche. Niches get you riches. They lead to riches. And so a niche is defined as denoting or relating to products, services, or interests that appeal to a small specialized section of the population. And what that really means is a common interest or something that is related to a particular thing. So that can be a product, a service, an interest, and indeed the market. So a product is an article or substance that is manufactured or refined for sale. That can be food, that can be a widget, it can be a number of things. It can be clothing, shoes, earrings, that's a product. A service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. So a service can be sales as a service, it can be food, it can be coaching, it can be a number of things, but it can also be a product. So some of these things sort of overlap a bit. An interest is a subject about, uh, about which one is concerned or enthusiastic. And again, an interest, a niche, Detroit is a niche, Detroit is a brand. So that's something that sort of brings us all together and a lot of times we can work together just because we're interested in, in putting Detroit on and making that space and uh, the idea of Detroit a thing. And then the market. The market is the place or group to which you resell your goods. So it might be a particular physical space. It might be an online place. But that's what is defined as a market. So knowing the person's niche, your, your prospect, the person that you want to network with, knowing their niche is the best way to start a conversation. And I say niche and niche sort of interchangeably. So niche, niche, tomato, tomato. Um, the, the key is there's one of the books that I read when I started in sales more than 10 years ago was called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's an old book. It's probably 75, 80 years old. But the things that are in that book are still relevant today. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. You can listen to it. You can read it. I've read and listened to it over and over. But the truth is people love to be able to talk about themselves and what they do. Everyone has pride in their job and in what it is they're doing. They want to talk about that stuff. And giving them an opportunity to do that is flattering. So it can't be empty flattery that's just, oh, you know, hey, you're so great. It can't be empty compliments. It has to be a genuine, a, a, a genuine interest that you have. So I say here, flattery will get you everywhere. Being knowledgeable about your prospects, accomplishments, and highlights can keep the conversation going. So you'll see two pictures over here on the side. And so what you guys can sort of expect as I'm going through these slides is I'm going to talk about stories and people and show pictures that I've taken. So the two people at the top, you'll see James Chapman to the left and Delane Parnell to the right. James Chapman uh, owns a company called Plainsight. It's an app. You have to check it out. It's really great. Um, and then Delane Parnell owns a company called Play Versus. And both of these guys are doing some amazing things. But I met them for the first time at Afrotech in Detroit in 2018. Um, I bought James Chapman's book. We'll talk a little bit more about the I in networking being investing. You want to invest in the people that are your prospects that you want to network with. But I bought his book. I follow him on uh, Instagram. His personal page is I Wrote the Hustle at I Wrote the Hustle. But Plainsight app also has its own page. And they add a lot of value. The gentleman on the bottom is Kev Irwin of StockX at Kev Knows. Um, this picture that we took together is in, is at Afrotech in Oakland last November, but Kev actually hosted Afrotech in Detroit in 2018. And I started following from that point. He does great content and he's all over the place. Super great stuff. So the next letter in networking is E, engage their expertise. So you want to engage. So when you talk about the word engage and what that means, it means to occupy, attract, or involve someone's interest 
or attention to participate or become involved in. So when you talk about engaging with someone, you want to know who they are. You want to know what they do. Research, research, research. Google them, go to their website and go to their socials. You want to engage with them on social media. I get a lot of um, feedback on, on social media. I'm not DMing people because that's sort of weird, even though I just found out that when you send somebody a reply to their story that that shows up as a DM, but I get engagement from that. So when somebody has a story and you watch their stories, just send in a quick reaction or something you know, to that, that helps for me with engagement. But some things that you can do that are free, like comment, share, subscribe, repost, follow, engage with them in, in that way. Find out what their interests and goals are. And a lot of times they're promoting something, they're selling something. They want you to engage with them in some way, which is why they're on social media. So you want to support them however you can. And you can buy a, a book, a t-shirt, a product, attend their conferences. If they have something that's going on, like I told you guys, I wrote a book, it's up for pre-sale. I know every single person who bought a book for me, every person by name. Now, most of them were my friends, admittedly, but there were a couple of people who I wasn't expecting to purchase the book. And I remember them. And it's like, we went to high school together. Like, I didn't even know that you read my blog, let alone that you were going to purchase my book. But when you talk about engaging someone's expertise, I, as a transportality and uh, engagement expert in Detroit and, you know, somebody who's curating uh, experiences, nobody's really going to be interested unless they're in a food business about what I do. So you want to engage what they do. So here you'll see a picture of Phil Simpson um, at art by Philip Simpson at the small brand. And here I say the easiest way to engage is to talk about the person that you want to connect with. And I was able to engage with Phil at a high level by connecting him with an opportunity. Now Phil being an artist wouldn't necessarily care about me being a transportation entrepreneur or a food entrepreneur but if he gets to paint a bust or do a project that involves his art, then that's something that's going to be able to engage him and it's going to interest him. So what you want to do to engage them once you're talking to them is ask questions. That's one of the things that is the key to being a successful salesperson is asking questions. Everybody wants to buy, but nobody wants to be sold. As entrepreneurs, we're selling ourselves. So people want to buy in but you have to be able to present it in a way that makes them want to buy. And you do that by asking questions. So ask questions, see how you can add value and support their efforts. Who else do you know that you can connect them with that can help them? So I've connected Phil with some great people who he's gotten engagements from, who he's gotten um, some value from. And because of that, our connection just grows and grows and grows. So the next thing we're going to talk about is time. Time is super valuable. As entrepreneurs, we know that as much money as we can make, we can never buy another second of time. So we don't want to waste our time on things that are fruitless. And we definitely do not want to waste other people's time. So when you're talking about engaging someone and, and spending time with them, you need to know who you're talking to. So, and what I mean by that, you should know who they are in terms of their name what their title is, what it is that they're involved in. Because if you know those things and you're not going to waste their time by engaging them in silly questions. If I have an audience with Mary Barr from General Motors, I need to understand that this is the president of one of the largest companies in the entire world. I shouldn't be talking to her about something that isn't going to add value or something that she's not directly involved in. She's not going to want, as for me as a transportation or a transportality expert doing food, She's not going to care about that at her level. However, if I'm talking to her about an app that could do something to help, you know, change the efficiencies in General Motors, she might be interested in that. So you need to know who you're talking to so that you're not wasting time. And I, I say time is money. Don't waste other people's money. Don't waste my money. I'm not going to waste my own money because money is time, even though you can't buy more time with your money. So you need to be succinct and you need to be able to make your proposal or pitch quickly and efficiently. So if you know who you're talking to, you've done your homework, you've already engaged with them online and maybe you have a soft opening, you're able to go in there and tell them what it is that you want to talk about. So you'll see a couple of pictures here. Some of you may or may not have heard of E.T., the hip hop preacher. His name is Eric Thomas. He's a native Detroiter. This guy went from being a homeless high school dropout to the number one motivational speaker in the world. Very inspirational. I've been following him since 2014. Um, this is a picture of me in front of uh, his backdrop. That's my daughter who served as my assistant, but I was able to engage with him 
um, at a camp that he did. And you'll see here, it says, welcome home, ET, Triple Double Academy. And I just served them. I gave them breakfast. I did it out of my own pocket just because I wanted to be able to give back. At that point, I hadn't yet been able to invest into one of his conferences, which are pretty expensive. Um, I had done some other things online, had bought T-shirts and that sort of thing. But this was a way that I was able to give back that made me feel good. And it wasn't even about, you know, um, getting online or getting accolades or a thank you. It was just something that I was able to do um, that made me feel great. Um, and to be able to say that, you know, I did it. I was there. So the next thing we want to talk about is worth or wealth. And I'll use these two words interchangeably. So worth, you need to know the worth of the person that you're talking about and not necessarily their net worth, but what it is that they do. So worth is defined as the level at which someone or something deserves to be valued or rated. So when you have people who are worth a lot of time or money or, you know, you, that's important to know, like you need to know their perceived wealth and this is going to help you to inform your strategy. Are you talking to the person who can get you in? Is this person a gatekeeper or are they the head honcho? Are they a decision maker or is this someone that you're just going to be able to maybe chit chat with? But that doesn't mean that if it's not the, the gatekeeper or the head honcho that you shouldn't engage them because a lot of times networking is about connections. So if I meet somebody who knows the gatekeeper, then it's important for me to make a good impression with that person too. But you also need to know what your worth is to them. But in, in terms of their worth, you need to know their title or position and how you can increase their efforts and their worth. And you also need to know your worth to them. So are you above or below the place where you'll be useful to them or to someone else? If not, then ask leading questions to help you get to the person that you are indeed looking for um, or to get information about how you can reach out to them. So a couple stories here. The lady that you see at the top here is Jill Ford. At one time, she was the director of entrepreneurship and innovation for the city of Detroit. She was recruited by Mike Duggan herself. And the person that you see at the bottom is Joelle Jones, along with my oldest daughter, Ashley. So I talk about how you have to be willing to have those conversations, but you need to know who you're talking to. So um, a great uh, relationship that I've established was with a young lady that I sold a bus trip to, and we're good friends to this day. Um, I gave her a really great deal, and she allowed my daughter to hop in, even though she was a little too young. She was her special guest. Well, during that trip, Jill Ford was on the panel. Um, it was about uh, tech and engagement, and apparently, my daughter and Jill had a moment. And so, my daughter comes home, and she's so excited, and she was just really just blown away by her interaction with Jill Ford. My daughter's father, my first husband, is from Ghana, West Africa. Well, Jill had done some work in Ghana. And uh, they had an exchange around this and Jill apparently was impressed with my daughter. And so at an event that Jill had put on for Motor City Match, and you, saw, you all saw that I was a Motor City Match awardee and a finalist, um, I attended this event. And at the event, I engaged Jill at the level that she was at. I asked questions that were relevant to that topic. But when it was over with, I had it on my heart to thank Jill. So I had my daughter write her a handwritten thank you note and I gave her a nice card. And it was with nothing that I wanted out of it other than to say thank you. So that's the sincerity part. I was sincere and I gave gratitude and that equaled a genuine connection. So I gave her this card and I just told her, I said, hey, you know, you had a moment with my daughter at this particular camp. Her name was Ashley. And she said, I remember Ashley. And to my surprise, she took the card, she opened it and she read it right there. Now there's a line of people behind me. I darted my way and was the first person to be able to talk to her. And she read the entire card. And at the end, she says, does she have a mentor? And I'm blown away. And to this day, Jill Ford is my daughter's mentor. Um, and again, it goes back to these people. A lot of times when you're engaging with them, they have so many people who want things from them. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about networking, how you can, you know, give and, and, and receive and that sort of thing and raise your net worth. But oftentimes people are looking for things to take from them. Networking should be from a place of giving. For me, I'm a firm believer, and I'll talk about this later in the slides, you don't necessarily eat from the seeds that you've sown. You might not see fruit from the things you've sown, but you reap what you sow. So if you're constantly giving, 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 doing, making connections and doing things for people, you're going to get some good back, even if it doesn't come back from the person that you expected that it would. So you have to do it from a place that isn't selfish and that isn't just a very 
uh, self-serving sort of place. So that leads us to over deliver. So if you're trying to work with somebody, you need to over deliver. And when I say over deliver, a lot of times people tend to under promise or over promise and under deliver, but you want to over deliver and you do that by under promising. And so I'll tell you a story that, uh, that sort of talks about what that means. When I worked in sales, I worked in business to business sales and I sold first aid and safety products. So we sold uh, gloves, hard hats, PPE, all the masks you see now, I was selling those jokers in 2009, um, earplugs and that kind of thing. And we made commission on the things that we sold. So a lot of times you get stars in your eyes and you get excited when somebody says, hey, I need five cases of gloves. And so your immediate reaction is to overpromise and say, no problem, I'll have them back here tomorrow. Because you're thinking, hey, next week, that's gonna be on my check, right? But what you have to do is under promise and over deliver. So what I had to learn to do, because sometimes we didn't have the gloves and socks, sometimes our computers would say that we did and we didn't, I would have to say, okay, thank you so much, Mr. Customer. Give me a couple of days, I'm gonna check with the warehouse, I'll give you a call and let you know how soon I can have them back. Do you need some today? Are you out? And I would ask questions to find out how soon do you need these? Are you completely out? I can see what I can grab for you. What I would do when I was done with that customer, I would go to my van. I would call the warehouse and say, hey, Scott, do you have these gloves in? Yes. How many you got? I got 10. Put aside five for me. I need them for a customer. I'll grab them in the morning. Want to make sure they're the right gloves. So I'm still not telling the customer at this point that I have them because I need to verify because sometimes things are marked incorrectly. And that's happened too. So get to the warehouse, they're the right gloves, bit, bam, boom. Now I show up the next day with the gloves. And because I under promised by saying, hey, give me a couple of days, I'll see what we have. But now I'm over delivering. Now I've solidified you know, my worth to that customer and I've given him a really, really great experience. So that's always a great thing. You want to under promise and over deliver. So you, you want to do more. And that's what this slide is talking about. Do more than what they're expecting. So if you've done all the things up until now, if you have discovered that customer's niche, if you've engaged their expertise, you're not wasting their time and you've been able to add some wealth and worth and you know their wealth and worth, when you're over delivering, you're successful at this point because you've gotten your prospect to agree to work with you or to engage with you in some way. You need to do way more than they're expecting. You should connect them with resources if possible. You want to do more than just get that photo opportunity. A lot of times, I mean, people know when you're cloud chasing, you take a picture so you can post it online to say what you did. When I did that event with Eric Thomas, um, I didn't take one picture with him, not one, neither did my daughter. It wasn't about that. It wasn't about being on his socials. It was about being able to sow that seed. I may not ever eat from the seed. I may not get the fruit from that, but it made me feel good to be able to give back in that way to someone who had given so much to me. So you want to go beyond the photo opportunity. Forget the photo op. This is your chance to genuinely connect with someone that you can add value to. And you want to always add value. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. There's a young lady who runs a, um, an organization called All Things Detroit um, at Ask Jennifer, Jennifer Crawford. And All Things Detroit is a, uh, an event that happens twice in Eastern Market, uh, twice a year. But Ask Jennifer has grown into a brand that is curating all kinds of stuff all over the city. She does Beacon Park. She does Cadillac Place. She's doing markets. She did TEDx Detroit. Um, she did the lab section of TEDx Detroit that I got to participate in. And I met Jennifer while I was doing transportation. And I rock with it. I was at the first All Things Detroit. So I was a fan from way, way back. So when I get a call from her that she wants a bus from the company that I was working for, I was blown away. I've been able to make that into a genuine and real relationship. Jen and I talk, we text, we go walking together. When I went to San Francisco to Afrotech, I'm wearing her shirt, that All Things Detroit sweater, because I invested, I bought from her. I invest in the brand. I'm constantly liking, sharing, retweeting, reposting. And you have to do it out of a desire to, serve, a desire to serve and not just for personal gain. And that's a me thing. So I put me in the quote, because that's my quote. Um, and I said before, but the truth is many of my idols have become my equals because I turned my fangirling into follows and started to engage with the people that I wanted to work with. And that's what led to so many of my opportunities. You won't see a picture here, but I, in the organization that I was in in G-Beta, 
I was a fan of the person running the organization, which got me interested in the organization. And at some point I actually ended up being chosen because I kept persisting and I kept staying in and I kept applying and I kept, I stayed, you know, I stayed with it. So the R in networking stands for relationships. And another R in relationships is real. So you want to be real. You want to be authentic. You want to be your most genuine self. A lot of times people look at what's happening in the world and they're looking at what other people are doing and they try to imitate that. Your superpower is being yourself. It's being you. It's being real. Um, Eric Thomas, not E.T. the hip hop preacher, but Detroit Eric S. Thomas, he talks all the time. Um, he's the chief storyteller for the city of Detroit. He talks all the time about authenticity. And he talks about when you're talking to someone that you need to, or when you're sharing your story, that you need to tell your story as if you're telling your very favorite person a story. So if you're telling your story to your best friend, that's a very different conversation than if you are being very formal and you are giving a talk for it. No, be yourself, be authentic, be real. And that's how you build relationships. So that's something that for me, I'm going to be myself all the time. I'm going to be authentic. Sometimes it makes people uncomfortable. But what does real mean? Real means not imitation or artificial. It means genuine. And relationship means the way in which two people are connected. So again, be real, not imitation or artificial. Be genuine. That's what helps you to make a real connection by being yourself. Your interest in the people that you're talking to should be real. It should be legitimate and genuine. That goes back to those principles that you'll see in uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You need to be yourself. Authenticity is attractive. It shows confidence. Something that I learned in sales is that sales is 80% confidence, 20% product knowledge. I can't be confident if I'm not being myself. If I'm being me, then I don't have to think about what I'm saying. I don't have to have to, have to. That's how I talk. I don't have to think about the things that I am saying. That it puts you on edge. If I'm just myself and I let it roll off the tongue, people are going to hate it or love it. But even if they hate it, they'll respect it because they'll know that you're not putting on airs and you're not being fake. So be genuine. Selling yourself, selling anything is 80% confidence, 20% product knowledge. And that's what makes sales a skill that is transferable. If I can sell first aid safety products, I can sell myself. If I can sell bus trips and experiences, I can sell food. It's a transferable experience, but it goes back to that confidence. Knowing about the product, and the product is anything. It's yourself, it's the transportation, it's the tours, it's whatever I'm selling. And so one of the things that you want to talk about in terms of genuity, or one of the things I want to talk about in terms of genuity and being real, is the things that has happened for me because of that, relationships, being real. So the top picture you see is my friend, Matt. His name is Matt Nahan. And the bottom picture is my friend and coach. His name is Steve McLean of Knowledge Action Success. And those ats are their Instagram names. So at Matt Nahan and at uh, Steve McLean 2000 or S. McLean 2000. He gave a talk yesterday. Hopefully you guys can catch it. If not, you should go back and look at it. But there was a time that I was, I told you guys I have a commercial driver's license. So as an entrepreneur, when you're entrepreneuring, you have a day job. Like my um, businesses don't pay me full time. A lot of times it's supplemental income. I'm a recently single mom. Um, I'm navigating now my second divorce and that's what my book is about, but I'm navigating my second divorce. So my income streams are my businesses, but what keeps me working and, and keeps my house going are jobs. So my present job, you'll see from my uh, background, it says Detroit Historical Society. I work now at the Detroit Historical Society at the Detroit Historical Museum. I sell field trips and experiences to groups and students. But at one time, I was driving the shuttle bus for Henry Ford Hospital. And the first story is an entrepreneurial win because it says they're employee turned vendor. Because in February of 2018, I started working at Henry Ford House uh, Hospital, driving the shuttle buses through the neighborhood. And in July of 2019, June of 2019, I was a vendor and I was doing a tour for them. And that was because of a relationship. Matt and I met at a transportation company some years ago and he worked at the hospital and we've maintained our friendship, our relationship. And he had the power to be able to hire my company. I had the credentials. I had everything that was needed. Obviously it happened. It went through and I got paid. So everything was on the up and up as it should be as we are entrepreneurs. 
Um, but that was a really pivotal moment for me. And when I met my coach, Steve, I was driving the shuttle bus and in walks this, this guy and we speak to each other. He's a naturally friendly guy. So am I. And uh, I said to him, I said, has anyone ever told you that you look like Sir Richard Branson? And he laughs and we, we joke and he eventually tells me that, you know, he is an instructional engineer uh, for the health system, but he's a coach and he does podcasts. And I'm like, man, I love podcasts. I may or may not have been listening to uh, a podcast at that moment uh, while I was driving to keep me awake, allegedly. And uh, we end up chatting. I follow up with him, which is the key to networking. And I followed up, sent him an email, and he looked me up. And I had the receipts to back it up. He saw uh, my company lunch break. He saw the things that I was doing, and he wanted to work with me. And he's been my coach for two years now. Um, I actually have a podcast that he and I did together at Tech Town. Um, I'm going to give you guys some information you can follow up, um, but you can listen to that on my website, uh, the podcast that he and I did together. And we share that story, but we talk about that. So I bring that up to say that integrity and vulnerability will take you very far in your networking. You should never be ashamed to share your talents with those that you encounter. This is what leads to long-term and prosperous relationships. So a lot of times as entrepreneurs, some of us may front like we're not still working. I'm not a full-time entrepreneur. I desire to be one, but I'm not. I may be a bus driver. So you might see me driving a bus. That doesn't mean that I'm not an entrepreneur. That's part of entrepreneuring. I have to work. I have to take care of my children. I have to run my household because they want lights and gas and water and cable and not cable, but you know, all those apps that come on my Roku. So I have to have a steady income and entrepreneurship is up and down. It isn't always big checks. It isn't always, and, and that happens sometimes, but the way that my life is set up, I need that steady paycheck and the entrepreneur bumps need to be able to help that until I can figure out how to way to support it. So when you think about one of the keys to this, cons, uh, it is consistency and credibility plus visibility equals profitability. Okay, and I'll run that back. Consistency, credibility, and visibility equals profitability. I'll make sure that I add that um, to the slides that I'll make available on the website later. We'll talk about that so you guys can get this deck. Um, but that's the thing. When you're consistent, credible, visible, you'll be profitable. And that's what happened for me. And it's, it's happened again and again and again. So the K stands for no. You need to know what it is that you want. You need to know your ask, okay? And knowing means to be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information, being familiar or friendly with. So whether it's an organization or an individual, you should always know what your expected or hopeful outcome is at the start of your conversations or negotiation. Stephen Covey talks about that in the seven habits of highly effective people. He talks about the importance of knowing the end from the beginning. So whether it's an organization like you see at the top here, or if it's an individual, you need to know what it is that you want when you're networking. So the top picture that you see is a group of students from the Stamp School of Art and Design at the University of Michigan. And this was an article that they wrote and it says, lunch break with Detroit Neighborhood Entrepreneurs Project. And that's something that I mentioned in my bio that I was able to make happen. And that started because I was working with an organization and there was an opportunity to engage with DNEP as it's called. And they, my mentor, Monica, she told me, she said, you need to make a list of all of the things that you know that your business needs that you're struggling with. And I literally wrote down 50 things. Um, the way that that program works is that they turn the students into, um, you they turn you into a client for the students for them to get real world experience. So they take junior and senior level students from the law school, the school of art and design, which is stamps, the Ross school of business, and from the accounting school and they turn you into their client. So junior, senior level, and master's level students, and you're their client. So they can see how to interact in, with the real world. And so I had to do an interview with all of the professors to tell them what it is that I needed. And three years later, I'm still working with this organization. I've done catering for them. I've done consulting with them. And the people who run the place, they've really genuinely become my friends because I'm always trying to help. I'm always referring great businesses to them that turn out to be great clients that add a lot of value. The bottom picture that you'll see, I talked about how I won a pitch competition. And that's me holding a check for what was then called the lunch stop for $3,000. When I went to the school of, um, uh, to, the, to DNEP, I told them back then that everything about my business was on the table, including the name. So I went from being the lunch stop 
to being lunch break. And that's as a credit to those students. But back then I was lunch stop and I did a pitch competition. And the way that I won that pitch competition is because I knew what I was asking for. I knew what to tell them, how I was going to use the $3,000. And that made the difference between me getting $3,000, $2,000, or $1,000. And so the goal in all of this is to work together again and to get more connections. So the way to do that is to think steps ahead. Do all that you can to impress your new friend or your organization. So with DNEP, I'm not just thinking about what they can do for me. I'm thinking about what can I do for them, sending them more clients to keep the program going, being solutions driven, thinking about ways that I can solve problems. That was a problem for them. Not having clients to be able to service was a sincere problem for them, and I helped to solve that. And when you do it, knock it out the park. Kill it. Those are the other two Ks. Knock it out of the park. Anytime that they need something from me, I'm there. Anytime they have an event, I'm there. Anytime they want me to talk to students, I'm there. I'm always willing to help them. And so they're still excited to help me and to see me grow. That's, that's, that's the, the true key to networking. So we've talked about this a couple of times through the talk, investing, I. That's important. People are excited about the things that they're doing. And when you invest in them and you show them that you're doing something, they are excited to support that. So the investing is providing or endowing someone or something with a particular quality or attribute. So when you invest, you want to give first. I keep talking about this concept of giving. You want to give. It's better to give than to receive. But the more you give, the less you have to ask because people want to give back to you. When you're giving, you're adding value. You want to invite collaboration. You want to see ways that you can be able to invite other people to be able to help. And the thing that I say is real, recognize real. That's just the truth. People who are on the same path, you're vibing together, you recognize when somebody else is doing the same thing. So I'm going to tell a story about that and how this worked out for me. So you guys see these beautiful shoes right here. These are Distinct Life brand Pumas designed by Rick Williams. And you guys should look up Rick and Yolanda Williams. They own a company called Cream Blends, in addition to Distinct Life, they design shoes, they do consulting work, they do a ton of stuff. One of my favorite songs is by a dude named 6AM, and it's the Detroiters theme song. I literally listen to it every day, and that's by Distinct Life, They like that brought to you by them. Um, it's just really interesting to see the things that they're doing. And I'll tell a little bit about uh, more about the story um, that helped me to move even closer towards another one of my idols um, because of this. But these shoes right here were released in December. Um, I talked a little bit about how I'm going through divorce. Again, authenticity, vulnerability. I talk about everything. I'm a little bit of an overshare, but I came home from my trip to Afrotech in November to California, and my husband had moved out. We broke up. All good. Life is fine. We're going through a divorce. It is what it is. Not going to cry about it at least not here, right? Um, but I came home and my life changed. We went from having two incomes, two parents, to I'm a fully single parent. No help, no assistance, whatever. This shoe drop happens and I want to buy these shoes, not only because they're fly, but because I want to invest and I want to support them. But as it turns out, I didn't have the hundred bucks or whatever it was to be able to buy these shoes, but I still wanted to show them that I respect and appreciate what they're doing. They put here, Detroit inspires the world. They're inspiring Detroit. And these are people who are my age. These are people who um, are family folks. They're married. They've got two kids. And they're showing the world that you don't have to be this stereotype. And they're killing the game. So I ended up doing what I could do. And I took my company lunch break. And I invited myself into the place where they were. And I told them, I said, hey, I, I, I'm here to set up breakfast for the Distinct Life team. And I didn't tell them that I was doing it. I just went and did it. And I took a little bit of money that I had and I made a little continental breakfast and set it up. And I was just going to send them a note later, like, here you go. But as I'm sneaking out the front, Rick and Yolanda are walking in and Yolanda sees me. She's like, what are you doing here? I had met her through G-Beta. Their cream blends brand had gone through G-Beta. And so we had met at an event previously and had been able to connect and chat. And I said, you know, you guys are great. Y'all are inspiring the world. I just wanted to show some love and bring y'all breakfast. She gives me a hug. She's really, really touched. Because again, people a lot of times are trying to take and see what they can get. So when somebody's just giving unsolicited, it really does hit that mark. And she gives me a hug and she says, what size shoe do you wear? And I'm like, what? The very thing that I wanted to be able to buy that I couldn't afford, I got instead through giving. And they gave me a pair of shoes. And I only rock them on special occasions. 
uh, they're beautiful and they fit very nicely. And I'm just, I'm so grateful. And that's, that's one of those things. And that's just one, that's probably my favorite story of many of how you can genuinely just give from your heart and you can't outgive a giver. So some people will take advantage of your giving. That's a given that people will take advantage of your giving, but not everybody. Most people, they don't want to do that, but you should still give by default. So the, the end in networking, and we're already winding down, guys, it's crazy. The N in networking stands for name. Now, my name is Asha. Doesn't make grammatical sense on paper. A-C-H-S-H-A. -H -H -A. All those consonants between two vowels, it doesn't look like that. Names are very important. So whenever I introduce myself to people, I've been called Ashley, Asher, Oscar. I have to say my name is Asha, like Tasha, but without the T. But that makes people want to spell it phonetically, A-S-H-A which is a spelling of Asha. There's a bunch of different variations that I've seen. But it's important to know somebody's name. So when you're networking, you want to make sure that when you see somebody, that you're saying their name and you're working it into the conversation. Something that I learned in business to business selling is knowing your contact's name. I would go to 12 to 15 places a day and I could have anywhere from five to 20 people that I should know in that place. So I had to take notes, but I had to look people in their eye and say their name when I first meet them. Oh, Hey, Tom, how's it going? I'm Asha. It's nice to meet you. So what do you do here, Tom? Oh, that's really great. And I'm working his name into the conversation. If they give you a business card, first things first, take a picture of it as soon as you get a chance. Maybe not right in that moment, but you want to study their business card and you want to look at them, look at their name, look at them, look at their name and talk to them. It shows respect for what it is they're doing. And you're learning their worth as well. It's going to have their title. It's going to have, you know, some information about the company but take a picture of it, save that in your phone as the contact so that you always, if nothing else, if you ever lose the card, now you have it in your phone. So you plug their information into your phone, their name, their phone number, their email, you take a picture of it, and now you have all that information. But a name is a word or a set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. A person's most important thing that they want to hear is their name. That's the sweetest sound on earth when you hear your name. So you want people to, you want to know people's names and remember it. You want to spell it correctly. Now, again, I have a funny name and it's spelled weird. I don't take offense when people mispronounce my name or misspell it, but I definitely am very happy when people do spell it right and say it right. So again, proper pronunciation is pivotal. Say that three times fast. Proper pronunciation is pivotal. When you say my name correctly, I don't want to have to correct you. So I'll let you call me by my wrong name and that's embarrassing for both of us. Um, but the other end in networking stands for new opportunities. And that's what networking is all about. It's about creating these new opportunities. So you'll see here that there are two pictures of two guys that are on TV. The top guy is Mark Evan Jackson, and he plays a dude named Sean on The Good Place, which at one time was my favorite TV show to watch with my oldest daughter. The second guy is Marcus Lamonas from the TV show The Prophet. I've been watching Marcus Lamona since before his show when he was doing like, uh, when he was talking, they would have him featured on like CNBC. But this picture was taken at Startup Week in 2018. I was able to connect with Marcus Lamona because number one, we have the same birthday. Number two, I just, I, I really rock with what he does. He seems like a great and sincere person. One of the things that I'll say about networking, I have watched every single free thing that I can about people that I want to network with. So with Marcus Lamona, um, I can't necessarily invest in him directly because none of his businesses are here with the exception of Detroit Denim and they're a little pricey, but I can invest my time into getting to know who he is so we can have a conversation. So when I met him, I knew from watching his shows that he loves cookies. I didn't know if he had any sort of restrictions. So I got him cookies from Sister Pie because they're vegan and they're, you know, all of those things that wouldn't gluten free. And so I was able to, I got there an hour and some change early, set front row center and I was able to hand him the cookies and he only took three pictures and he took that one picture with me. With Mark Evan Jackson, I was actually driving a field trip and I scheduled a meeting with the director from Prosper Us, Chanel, at Parks and Rec. As I'm waiting for Chanel to arrive, I see Sean. I had just watched his show the night before and I was like, oh my God, that's Sean from Good Place. And I didn't want to like fangirl all over him, but I also didn't know his name. Research, research, research. I looked him up, found his name. When he was done and it looked like he was about to go, I ran up on him. Confidence. Ran up on him. I said, hey, Mr. Jackson, I'm so sorry to bother you. My name is Asha. I have a little girl. We love your show. 
I would be the coolest mom in the world if I could just take a selfie with him. He's like, sure. Now, I'm not interrupting him while he's eating. I'm not being rude. I'm showing confidence. All of these things. He took the selfie with, with me. We had a great conversation. And I was the coolest mom in the world for about 60 seconds when Shay, my oldest daughter, Ashle, saw that picture. Last one. G is go for it. Go for it. Get started. Get going. Go forth. Get after it. And remember to be genuine. You want to just do it. Jump in. Leap. Because when you're doing these things, when you're networking, what do you have to lose? If you don't ask, the answer is always going to be no. Think about it. If I want to work with you and I haven't yet asked you, then what's my answer? My answer is no. But if I ask you and you say no, my answer didn't change. It's the same whether I asked you or didn't. But if I don't ask, I'll never get to the yes. So worst case scenario, I ask you and you say no, but that was the answer I got before I asked you. So I might as well ask because it might be a yes, or it may be a not now, or it may be talk to this person, but if nothing else, the next time I see you, we can talk about it and refresh that conversation. And that's what sales is about. Many of my biggest sales came on the heels of a lot of different no's. And no doesn't necessarily mean no, it means not right now, or I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's the right price. That's why it's important to ask questions. It's really important to continue to ask questions. So you want to go get it. Be the person who decided to go for it. The answer will always be no unless the question is asked. This right here is a picture of me that I took on my very first day working at the Detroit Historical Museum. I never thought that I'd ever work there. But networking. One of my dear friends, Monica, she was working with the museum doing an installation. They had a job post she sent it to me. And I went for it. And now I work in a place that, that I've always loved and revered never thought that I would have ever been able to work. And I work there now. So you want to always remember these three things. And this is a quote that I got from Jill Ford, my oldest daughter's mentor. Be curious, be generous, be fearless. So you want to ask questions, be curious. You want to be generous, which is offering help and solutions. And you want to be fearless. You want to be bold and courageous. Don't be afraid to run up on somebody just because he's on television. He's here in Detroit. That's our common factor. He, why are you here in Detroit? That's one of the questions I asked him. He was here for his organization that him and his wife run that helps students to learn confidence through performance. That's a common thread. And so this last page um, in our last couple minutes before we start our Q&A is just um, me having been able to network my way into some places with some people that I really respect. So this guy here in the top left corner is Brandon Williamson. Now, I'm wearing the jacket. It's a PRS VR jacket. I don't know if you can see that, but that is my first cousin. We didn't grow up together. He grew up in Grand Rapids, but this is my uncle's son. But this guy is one of the most famous people whose names you wouldn't know because his clothes are everywhere. Uh, Kevin Durant, um, Nelly Ashanti, Chris Brown, um, most of the leather, if not all the leather that you see on Empire, the famous leather pants that Nicki Minaj wore, um, Diddy has worn his leather coats, Charlemagne, his clothes have been on everybody, and that's at PRSVR. His clothes are incredible, and I've been able to, even though this is my cousin, I support him. I order stuff from them. I pay money for it, and they always throw some sauce on top because you can't outgive a giver, so I remember going on their website, looking at a bunch of stuff, and it was like $600 worth of stuff, put it in my, in my cart. And before I knew it, they sent me an invoice with some family discounts and then they over delivered and sent me a bunch more stuff on top of it, which I ended up being able to bless my nephew with for his birthday. The bottom left is Ann Sempowski Ward. You got to look her up. She is an investor and she's invested in some great uh, brands in Detroit, the aforementioned Plain Sight app and others. This guy here to the, uh, in the middle on the right, Bryce the third, you'll see another picture of Bryce the Third here with me and Toby and Wiggly in his dressing room at St. Andrews. I went to the Toby and Wiggly concert. I saw Ricky Yolanda Williams there. That was a point of, of, of conversation that we had when we met previously. Um, and it's just interesting because these are my two favorite rappers sitting, standing next to each other for real, for real. And I've been following Toby and Wiggly since the very beginning because he's an artist of Eric Thomas. And this is E.T. the hip hop pre preacher, the guy that I talked about earlier. This is 2014 when I first discovered him. And so I say here that networking has gotten me into rooms with people that I was only able to admire from afar previously. These tips, tools, and hacks have given me a chance to work with them, shake hands, and commune with them in a way that was unimaginable before. Food for thought, said this earlier, but you can get everything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And that's Zig Ziglar. Look him up too. He's amazing. Thank you, guys. This has been really great. 
Uh, my name is Asha Jones. You can find me at Asha So and So on Instagram. You can go to Asha.com. That's A C H S H A.com. Lunchbreak.com. L U N C H B R A K E. Lunch Break. And you can also go to Break Time Tours. That's C O. Um, but if you go to Asha.com, you'll see all of that stuff. This presentation is brought to you, is, is dedicated rather to the memory of my good friend, Monica Casares. Um, she started off as my business mentor and she's, she's helped me so much. And much of what I learned and know is, is because of her and I dedicate that to her. Um, so thank you guys so much. Ready to start the Q and A. Are you there, Grant? I'm here. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could call it up, share computer sound. Hello, hello, good morning. Yeah. Horns is blowing, and I'm pissing off the neighbors. What's up? Well, the home going on important. That was a great session. I had to, I had to call it back for you. Yeah. <laughs> we waiting on our paper. He says, next time when they ask you where you're from, we're going to say Detroit City where we're getting back on our feet. And it's like, the shredders know about that. That gives me goosebumps just saying it. I promise. Every morning I listen to that. It's on Spotify. Uh, 6 a.m. I think it's A-A-M-M-M or something like that. He spelled mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Asha, I mean, one great presentation, right? Oh, thank Not you. only was it the clouds and dirt high-level uh, understanding, but then dirt-level tactics on how to implement and then giving that full vision. So I love that. Uh, this is Wednesday. So this is my third day of, of doing some talks. And this is uh, the largest panel yet. We had, we topped out at 93 folks. And no uh, way. not only 93, top level, right? So that speaks to the networking of people sharing and coming into what it is you have to say. Uh, we had someone share that they were only here. Uh, Eileen says, I'm attending Entrepreneuring in Detroit session based on glowing recommendation from Robert Jackson, founder of Blatt WGN, and Asha has delivered above and beyond. That's crazy. Right? <laughs> someone That's crazy. is here because you're doing what you're saying you're doing in this session. That's crazy. Oh my so, God. I mean, kudos to you. Testament to all the hard work uh, you've been putting in. Thank you. Blessed, honestly. Thank you guys, unbelievable. That's, I, I, I don't know what to say. I definitely want to answer some questions if anybody yeah. has any. Uh, I'm we just so glad I got questions. through it. It's great. So we have probably five, eight minutes. So I'll run through them and, and just uh, tee them up for you. Uh, if you do have some more, go ahead and share them in the chat or down here in the Q&A. Uh, let's just start off. There is a uh, introverts. So any advice on naturally quiet people? Uh, unless you come to me, uh, Rashada is saying, I struggle with that techniquing of just walking up on folks and starting a conversation. Yeah, so it's the confidence thing. And believe it or not, I know that this doesn't seem like, but I'm an introverted extrovert. So I think it's like maybe 55, 45. I can be out in front of people, but it emotionally exhausts me. So I'm going to take a good long nap um, at the end of today, probably going to bed early because it, it's emotionally draining. So I'm, I'm more of a natural introvert, but I have to lean into the things that I'm good at. So if you are prepared to talk to them, just do it. They don't know that you're an introvert. That's something that you tell yourself. You're telling yourself that you're an introvert and that's not something that you do, but they don't have to know that. And when I first started selling, I just had to tell myself, I had to do affirmations. I had to get into my own head and tell myself good things about myself. And before time I started to believe it and it worked. So there's a couple different questions about uh, times of COVID networking. Okay. But networking in times of COVID uh, someone's asking about LinkedIn specifically, what success have you had? And someone else is asking about uh, just kind of other networks remotely. And they're including Facebook, LinkedIn, social media. So maybe kind of include and wrap all COVID times, online stuff remotely, 
just networking in, in that in this arena? Sure. I am not great at LinkedIn, but remember networking is about a common thread. So if you can find a mutual friend or an experience that you've shared, like, hey, I noticed that you have this in common, it, this amorphous thing, insert whatever it is here, being able to engage that. And again, going back to complimenting what it is that they're up to, like, oh, you're a speaker. I saw your talk on YouTube about such and such and so and so. And this thing really, really touched me. That's a great way to engage because you're not selling them anything. You're just complimenting is that sincerity, you know, uh, and being genuine. And that's a, uh, um, and that equals a genuine connection. Definitely interesting that even as you're talking, Asha, uh, more questions are coming on and people, it's the introvert thing. So thank you for the question about the introverts, you know, sure. introvert, I'm an introvert, uh, quiet. It's an interesting uh, pattern, I guess, is what I'm recognizing. <laughs> um, how do you recommend connecting if you're a very nice person, but cerebral person? It seems that these days people only consider you genuine if you are into pop culture and more down to earth. Any tips on being authentic, but warm? So authenticity itself is warm. So when you're being yourself, you come across that way. You want to smile. Like that's the other thing. I smile probably way too much and I don't necessarily love my smile, like the older I get, the more sort of teeth issues I have, but I smile a lot. And it just goes back into being yourself. So authenticity is just being yourself, you know, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I have definitely eaten my shoe, put my foot, put my foot in my mouth many, many times because I'm going to say what comes off the top of my head. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm an overshare, but people appreciate that. And a lot of times we beat ourselves up for the things that we say, but most times people don't even remember that. You know, it might be a gaffe in that moment, but you can't be afraid to have that gaffe. Again, when you're overthinking, you're not being yourself. So by being yourself, it's just going to roll off the tongue a lot more naturally. Like I speak in slang, but I also know some multisyllable words. It doesn't mean that I'm not intelligent just because I don't necessarily, because I use slang words, but I'm going to be myself 100% all the time. And that's the authenticity. All right, we have time for one more. And before we get to that, I just want to remind everyone, uh, thanks for being here for one. This session is being recorded and you can find it later on the Hey Summit website for Asha's session. It'll be posted back there instead of the watch now, they'll just be the video. Uh, so you can find it there. If you want to share some insights or connect with Asha, um, Ash, could you go ahead and share? Some people are asking for your connection links again. Would you sure. be able to share that slide so they can either screenshot um, yes. or you can go live now? And, All right. Uh, so the connecting is uh, Asha so and so, and that's just A C H S H A so and so. Um, on Instagram, but my website, I put it in the chat is asha.com. And there's a contact me form. I promise I'll email back everybody who emails me. Um, there's a contact form on there, um, asha.com, A-C-H-S-H-A.com. And I'm on Facebook um, as Asha. That's the good thing about having a weird name. Uh, you can lock down just about every domain uh, where you want to. Um, so Asha so-and-so, uh, my email is a Jones at lunchbreak, B-R-A-K-E dot com. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely happy to engage and connect with everybody. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, and all that other stuff. And I'm just, I'm so thankful that anybody even showed up. Like, that's probably always the thing that you're concerned about is, will anybody care? Uh, <laughs> right, right. So thank you, guys. When you connect with Asha, you can, you can bet on it that she's going to connect back with you. Um, Something, and so this last question I kind of wanted to wrap up and, and tee up for you is uh, not the introvert side of anxiety, um, of networking, rather the social anxiety or, mm. the, the, you know, the emotional intelligence of not just being a personality introvert, but rather maybe having some symptomatic um, things to overcome. 
Um, mm -hmm. And this might be a discussion for later, at, sure. uh, but tee that up for you. So the emotional intelligence, I would say that there are some really great books out there that you can read. Um, and just shoot me that question in an email and I'd be more than happy to, to see what resources I have and could find. But that's, that's real. And knowing that about yourself is real. Um, so I'd be more than happy to have that discussion uh, offline. But there's stuff, there's, there's resources and there's YouTubes about it and Spotify and that sort of thing. So if anything, uh, reach out to Asha personally. I'm, I'm guessing she'll be responsive and, and go through it with you. That uh, anonymous attendee also asked about uh, a mobile food business. So whoever you are, go ahead and connect with Asha and uh, she'll connect, with, connect back with you. No doubt. Thanks so much again. Thank Welcome everyone so much, to uh, Detroit Startup Week Wednesday, 2020. Yeah, what do we sure. sign off? Do we give some love? We share some love to everyone? Hey, Detroit love, y'all. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of Startup Week and some great talks and go back and look at the ones that you missed. <laughs>